There's something about the way that we customize our Macs that goes beyond just functionality. It's really about creating an environment that reflects what we're aspiring to achieve and to some extent who we are and how we want to work. For me, I see my Mac as a gateway to my creativity, productivity, and everything in between. And to get the most out of it, it means that I not only want to have a setup or a space that I enjoy working in, but also be really intentional about how I'm effectively using different features or apps and what purpose they serve. That's taken me quite a while to figure out, and today I want to condense what I've found works for me, both with the space that I've designed around my Mac and the features, apps, and optimizations that I have within macOS itself. So if you're new to macOS or you want to transform your Mac from just a device into more of an extension of your creativity, or you're looking for new ideas or ways to enhance your workflow, stick around and let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Setapp. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Over the years, the way that I've used my Macs has transformed dramatically. A few years ago, I mostly would have been doing software development. That shifted to more productivity-based work when I became a manager. And now being a full-time creator, things have centered heavily around my creative workflow with some of those earlier aspects mixed in. Going through all those different stages and roles and trying to figure out new apps or accessories, the main takeaway for me was that everyone is gonna work and value things a little bit differently. And my goal here today is just to help spark some ideas or things that can help you with your own Mac, which all starts with the space that you're working in. Working in a nice clean space that you enjoy is always super important because it can boost both your mood and your productivity. Again, this is going to be different for everyone, but for me, there are a couple of accessories specifically for the Mac that I find really useful in my space. If I'm more stationary, having my MacBook in a vertical stand like the one that I have here not only looks good, but it also takes up a lot less space, and because I only have two ports in use, one to my Thunderbolt dock and the other to my monitor, it's much easier to keep everything clean and out of the way as it all sits towards the back of my desk. This allows me to easily hide away any cables or cords that stick out, not only for those accessories, but others that I have attached like external SSDs and my headphones. If you want to dive into the specifics surrounding my setup, I do have a desk setup video that I'll link in the description, but just pertaining to improving your Mac experience specifically, there's a few accessories that definitely help me in my workflow. At a desk with my MacBook in clamshell mode, I'm obviously going to need some kind of keyboard, and there's a lot of great ones out there, but I keep coming back to the Apple Magic keyboard solely because of the ease of use and Touch ID. All I need to do to pair up the keyboard is just to plug it in once through the provided cable. All the keys are labeled in predictable spots that you would expect and with Touch ID I can easily sign in on my Mac and approve things like security settings without having to enter my password every time. I also really enjoy the typing experience and the battery lasts me over a month which is fantastic. Mice, on the other hand, are something that I've always struggled with, and to be honest, I haven't found anything that I've been 100% satisfied with, but the Logitech MX Master 3S is about the best that I've come across for a couple of reasons. One, it's comfortable in my hand, which is probably the most important thing, but beyond that, the controls really help me in my day-to-day -day workflow. I can customize different buttons to do things that I normally wouldn't be able to do on a standard mouse like access mission control, which we're going to get into in a couple of minutes, but I also have a horizontal scroll wheel that comes in very handy in any apps where there's a lot of side scrolling. That can be anything from creative stuff like photo or video editing to productivity related tasks like looking at spreadsheets or calendars. A mouse is something that I'm also going to use regardless of whether I'm at my desk or on the MacBook itself. And for each of those scenarios, there are a few things that I like to optimize specifically for the display that I'm looking at. Screen size plays a big factor here, and for larger screens like my studio display or really anything around 24 inches or higher in screen size, 
I'm gonna want some kind of effective window management. Now, macOS Sequoia, which will be available outside of beta in the fall sometime, will have some basic window snapping functionality built into it. But lately I've been using an app called Mosaic that is a little more advanced than that. By default, I can drag any window and drop it on the menu at the top to snap it to a particular place on the screen. So say if I'm coding on one side and I wanna see what I'm working on in a browser on the other, or if I'm in a meeting while I'm taking notes, or really anything where some kind of split screen multitasking is advantageous. I can also create shortcuts for the window placements and I can customize my own viewport sizes if I have something specific that I frequently prefer. If I'm just on the MacBook screen alone, I don't have a ton of room to work with, so I generally don't have as much use for something like this, but it's almost always the reverse problem, where sometimes I don't have quite enough space to fit everything on the screen, specifically with the menu bar. The problem here is that with some apps, I've got quite a few menu items, and with a notch already taking away some screen real estate, you'll see that some apps or info on the right hand side of my menu bar disappears, but that's pretty easy to solve. With an app called Bartender, I can condense that entire side of the menu bar and hide it away. And that way I can still see all the information that I want to, but it's just nicely tucked away in this little menu. And it keeps things a little bit cleaner in my opinion as well, which is beneficial regardless of screen size. Both of these apps are paid apps, which I'm totally fine with, especially if it's supporting developers, but one of the most annoying things about this whole process of finding apps for specific use cases is both how time consuming it can be and you can end up with a whole bunch of different subscriptions to manage, which in this day and age isn't ideal. Luckily, a lot of the apps that I'm using, including the ones that I've just mentioned or the use cases that I need to take care of, live within an app called SetApp. With SetApp, you can sign up to their platform for a single monthly fee of $9.99 and you'll have access to over 250 different apps and all their features that would normally cost much more on their own. You can simply open up the setup dashboard and search for the exact task that you're trying to solve for, and it will suggest all of the best tools or apps it has available for that specific use case, and will also give you a list of recommended apps based on your Mac activity. That in itself can save you quite a bit of time, and you can find some really useful tools that way. But if you prefer to browse around through everything by app type, you can do that too with categories for optimizing your Mac, creative or productivity based workflows or for software development. Having a centralized location for all of these apps is just a lot easier to manage and SetApp is constantly adding new apps within here. So this can be a really powerful tool and it has a ton of value. You can try out SetApp free for 30 days through the link in the description. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. I will list the apps that I use with Setup just below that link for anyone who is curious, and I will still touch on most of them here today, but I want to focus on some of the OS level features that can really help with productivity and speeding things up on your Mac. As I said before, I do a lot of creative work these days, whether that's design work, video or photo editing, or 3D printing, but I still do some software development, and that, plus my casual use on my Mac, can make things really messy throughout the day. I can end up with a whole bunch of windows open and a browser with tabs for everything that I look at in the day. And it's easy to get distracted working this way. So rather than just having it all popped up on a single screen and fumbling through everything that I have going on, I can use mission control to organize my work into different desktops. If you're using the trackpad on your Mac, you can use all four fingers and swipe up to open mission control or without a trackpad. You can hit the F3 button on a Mac keyboard or hold control and hit the up arrow to bring it up as well. I have it set to the thumb button on my MX master mouse for easy access, but once you bring up mission control, you can see all your windows that are open, which is currently a big mess in my case. And I can start to organize this by hitting the plus button in the upper right hand corner to add a desktop. That essentially gives me a blank slate and I can add as many desktops as I want, which is really useful for grouping your apps and screens and making them a little bit more purpose driven. I can simply drag any of these windows into a new desktop to organize them. And once I'm done and in a desktop, I can cycle through them by either swiping left or right with all four fingers on my trackpad or by holding down on the control key and hitting the left or right arrows. 
If you want to take Mission Control even further, there's an app called Mission Control Plus available in Setapp that will allow you to close windows from within the Mission Control view and create all kinds of custom shortcuts for window management as well. Running these different desktops, not only can I organize them by type or purpose, but I can also open new browser windows and have tabs open for that specific purpose, which just makes things a lot easier to process and there's less of a chance that I'm going to get distracted. Speaking of distractions, macOS also has focus modes you can set if you'd like to avoid or silence anything that might take you away from what you're doing. I can set these up by going into settings and going into focus and you'll see I have some options here by default where I can click on any of these and choose to silence notifications for specific people or apps. And I can set up custom filters for a few apps as well to filter out certain aspects or set up profiles within these apps. For myself, I generally don't play around with these too much and I usually just default to setting it to do not disturb. And to turn on focus modes, you have a couple of options. You can either go up into the control center icon in the menu bar and set focus easily through there, or the way that I prefer and that a lot of people don't know about is you can actually just hold down on your option key and click the time in the menu bar and it automatically goes into do not disturb mode. Another handy little feature that I use is called Quick Look, where I can preview quite a few file types like images, videos, and audio by selecting them in the finder and hitting the space bar, which previews the clip or image without opening it, which I find useful if I just want to scan through something or preview it. There are loads of other features within macOS, some of which are in the video that I did last week going over switching between apps, my browser setup, different settings and keyboard shortcuts that I'll also link below, but I do just want to briefly touch on some apps that I use every day that help me organize my work and personal life. When I'm doing any kind of idea generation or brainstorming, one of the built-in macOS apps I use a lot is Freeform, where I can make mood boards for creative looks or design ideas that I have, or I can organize and structure my thoughts, which I use a lot for these videos. I find the MindNode app in Setapp is really good for brainstorming as well, and when it comes to translating a lot of my ideas into these videos or really any kind of office related tasks, I just use Google Workspace to write scripts, set up meetings, and manage all my business related documents, just because it's easy to use and share if you're collaborating with other people. There's also a really useful add-on that I use in Google Docs called Comment Exporter that I use to generate spreadsheets from comments that I make in my scripts, which I turn into filming checklists, and there are loads of useful add-ons for everyone inside of here. When it comes to keeping track of all of that stuff and my plans and schedule, that's outside of Google Workspace, and I used to use Notion and Notion Calendar for that but I just found it can be quite slow and I've since moved everything into craft where I can sync my calendar right into it, keep track of anything that I have going on during the week, statuses of products and all that good stuff all inside of one app. This lets me know what video that I'm gonna be working on for the week, if there are any requirements or brands that I'm working with or expenses, and it's generally the hub that I use to organize everything that I want or need to get done, whether that be personal or professional. Those tools can be great for organizing both your personal and work life and helping you get more done on your Mac, but there are also some technical aspects that you may want to consider, say if you just bought a MacBook, and maybe you're still wondering if you made the right choice on the model that you selected. If you bought a Mac from Apple, you do have a 14 day return window to test everything out. So you do have some time to see if things are gonna work for you, and obviously you can run through your workflow to see how everything performs. But you can also use some system monitoring tools like iStat Menu if you're at all worried about how much load you're putting on your system. Now, modern Macs are pretty good at managing all of this, but if you want to take a look at a glance at system usage at a given time or look at temperatures of components within your machine, not only just to see if things heat up under load, but say you buy a cooling pad or something and you want to see if it's actually doing anything. Features like this can be extremely helpful in determining if it's gonna work for you. All of these apps and features, plus the stuff that I mentioned last week, I think will generally be the most helpful. And I don't know how much value there is in diving into my process for specific things like creating these videos or 
what I do for coding on different platforms. But if you'd like to know about any of that, please drop a comment down below along with anything else that you might want to add here that maybe could help someone out. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video or you found it useful. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech related content or crash a wedding with me where we eat bananas while making direct eye contact with people, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.